Hi everyone, thanks for joining me. So in today's video, I'm gonna be talking about sort of what exercise that you should be doing when you're getting into calisthenics and sort of like how to order them in your in your program. So basically it's like some basic programming for you. So if you're new here, my name's Lee, and if you're interested in anything to do with calisthenics or bodyweight training, and specifically sort of beginner guides and hints and tips, make sure that you subscribe, hit that bell icon so you know when I upload. Give the video a thumbs up if you found it useful and comment down below if you have any questions during the video and I'll do my best to answer them. With that out the way, let's get into the video. So I am a huge fan of sort of minimalist training, okay? So basically trying to pick a handful of exercises that can give you the most bang for your buck. Focus on them, dial down, and you seem to make a lot better progress. If you're doing sort of a chest workout, I don't see the point in doing six or seven different exercises just to hit the chest. I'd rather pick maybe two, three max, focus, dial down, put all my energy into those three, get really good at those three, and I feel that, that is a better way to train. That's not just something I believe in when it comes in calisthenics, that is just general training. Um, so that's the sort of thing that I like to apply in my calisthenics training. Um, so I like to break it down into to a few different, um, I guess, exercises or planes of motions that I'm going to be working in. So to give you an idea of what I'm talking about, I'll sort of go into the exercises that I do in my training and try and explain to you why I've put them there and also the order that I put them in. So for me, I focus on a couple of exercises per, I guess, body part, but for me, I break down my body part into either uh, sort of push pull legs or it would be back, chest and legs. I just focus on those key things. And obviously I add in core as a separate thing, but I focus on those and sort of add core in at the end. So for me, I break up my pulling on my back into sort of two planes, which is gonna be a vertical pull and gonna be a horizontal pull. So my vertical pull is obviously gonna be a pull up. And obviously depending on your strength level, the pull up might be good enough for you. Or if you're someone that isn't strong enough to do a pull-up, you may focus a little bit more on the horizontal pulling and then add in some assistance work, whether it is um, doing pull-ups um, sort of negatives or maybe doing pull-ups with a, assist, uh, a band assistance or if there's like one of those machines you can do using that to help you do pull-ups. The other variation you can do is sort of like if you're using gymnastic rings, you can get into a pull-up position but allow you, like put your legs in a position where they can assist you in the pull so you can build up the strength over time but also working in that plane. Um, so that's something that I prioritize as well and then I do a horizontal pull. So for me it is the inverted row. I mainly do my inverted rows using the rings and obviously I can change the intensity on that by changing the angle of my body um, or changing what I do with my legs, whether they're bent or whether they're straight. So I think that's two key things that you should have into your training because then you're able to hit the body, the back muscles specifically, from two different main angles. Some people may even add in a little bit of isolation work whether you're gonna be doing stuff like the front lever or the tuck lever, um, that's something you could potentially add in if you want to. Some people like to add in a little bit of rear flies. Sometimes I feel like too much can actually impact on your training. And if you've only got a certain amount of time or overall volume that your body can compete with, the more exercise you put in can impact on your, I don't know, your time management or maybe your overall recovery. So I find if I'm able to just do really heavy, work hard, three sets of five to eight doing pull-ups and inverted rows, I find that is a good mix for my back training. Um, one thing I do recommend people doing, and it's something that calisthenics can be a little bit deficient in, and that is some decent hinge work, um, which will also go into a little bit of back work or some posterior chain work. And one way you can counteract that is by doing maybe deadlifting once a week, or maybe doing sort of um, some kettlebell swings. That will work your hinge muscles, it'll work your posterior chain, and it'll also hit your back a little bit um, a little bit as well. So that's another way in which you can complete your back training. Um, when it comes to my sort of pushing element or my chest work, um, I will typically do dips. Um, so you can either do 
um, normal parallel bar dips. Um, if your sauna isn't strong enough to do that, but you're trying to work at getting better at the dips, you can use like, of like a resistance band and put your knees on net until you get strong enough. Or there are some of those dip machines where they've got the little platform that you can rest your knees on to assist you in that. And they are handy because doing the push-ups and getting stronger at the push-ups to build up those muscles to basically progress the dip is a great way to do it. But sometimes it's nice to be able to get into that position and learn the movement pattern of how your body works in that position is also handy to add in. So I do recommend some dip work or working sort of in that downward vertical plane, that vertical motion. Um, other work that I do with pushing will be, and again, you can do that on the parabolas. I normally do, do mine on the rings because I like adding in the lack of stability it makes me get stronger and I like the fact that I can pick a width that is better for my shoulders um, because some people find that dips can irritate their shoulders because fixed bars, they might not be right for you. Some people are wider, some people are narrower, some people have different mobility in their shoulders so that's what I like about using rings. Next bit I do is push up. I will normally do them on rings and at the minute I'm working on doing my rings and slowly elevating my feet and I'm working at um, sort of doing the rings turn down. I find it hits my chest a little bit harder but the nice thing about doing the push-ups on the rings is that it kind of combines doing a push-up and a fly at the same time because you, you've got that ability to bring the rings really close together and I find it gives me a better contraction in my chest and I feel it a lot more so again if you can find ways to make exercises a little bit more challenging do it because you'll get stronger in the long run and when I find once I take away the rings and I do push-ups on the floor, because that stability is there because of the ground, I find doing push-ups a lot easier. I can bang out a lot more. Or if I want to put a weighted vest on, I'm just stronger doing them. So you'll be doing that. Um, and then finally, and it kind of is a pushing, but it's in the vertical plane and that's going to be handstand work. Um, typically, I just do handstand push-ups. And when I look to progress them, I either in, like, increase the depth by either you know, going up on boxes or going up on some parallettes or something to increase the range of motion because that's another way in which you can make exercises harder and that's increasing the range of motion. But just by doing some handstand work and the idea of being able to gain some balance work is really good as well because a lot of calisthenics people like to do handstand work, whether it's walking hand hand, being able to hold it. I'd love to be able to work towards doing a freestanding handstand push-up because I've got the strength to be able to do a handstand push-up. It's just, I don't have the balance work. so. You could have handstands separately as sort of balance work. I like to finish it off as a the third pressing exercise that really completes hitting the pushing muscles in three different angles. So those are the exercises I do for my pulling and pushing or back and chest. Um, then I move on to sort of my leg training and this is something that I think people worry on how to do it when it comes to calisthenics and I've made a video before about calisthenics versus weights and I stand by it when it comes to leg training I do feel that calisthenics comes up a little bit short compared to weights but you're still able to get a really good workout and hit your legs in an effective way from different angles with body weight training but if you want to get like maximum size or maximum strength um, you know the barbell back squat is probably one of the best ones you can do. They've done there's so many studies out there where people, it correlates and it proves how fast people can run, how high they can jump. The barbell back squat is one of the best things for the legs, but some people don't want to do weights. Some people have mobility issues where the back squat is just, it's just not comfortable. Um, and some people just don't like the idea of a loaded bar on their spine. Whatever your thing is, you can do effective leg training with just your body weight. So for me, when I do my leg training, I'd love to be able to do a pistol squat, but I do not have the mobility. I'm working on my mobility as opposed to just using squat shoes so I can get towards this. At the minute, my leg training is consisting of sort of like a shrimp squat, or I think Athlean X called it the levitation squat. And it's basically, I just lower my knee down to a pad. I make sure that my feet, my shin or my toes don't touch the floor. I literally come down backwards, my knee touches, and then I stand up. And, I find it's just like a harder version of a squat or it's kind of like doing a pistol with your legs behind. If you're someone that wants to focus more on doing the pistol while trying to work on your mobility, another good thing to do is to sort of do the elevated pistol where you sort of stand on a box and then you come down, sort of do a one-legged squat, but the ground isn't in the way for you to be able to do 
to be able to complete the pistol because a lot of people have the, the mobility or the strength to be able to keep their leg out in front of them with the box who are able just to come down normally so that's a good way of doing it and that hits like the whole entire leg so that is a really good exercise to do um, bridges um, typically both legs it's too easy you can crack up a little reps but once you start doing single leg sort of bridges um, that can be quite a taxing exercise to do on your hamstrings on your glutes the other thing you can do is if you have access to a gym ball you can put your feet on them and you can sort of do a hamstring curl um, and then other people will do a thing called a Nordic curl where they sort of usually on the lap pull down they'll attach their feet and they sort of like lean forward and then curl back up normally it's an eccentric move or the lowering phase but some people might try and curl up as well so that's a really good exercise to hit your hamstrings and then people normally finish with sort of calf raises um, if you want if you're in a position to if you have access to it you could put maybe a little bit of weight on you if you want to do your hip raises or you're doing your sort of like shrimp squat or levitation squat or pistol squat to make it a little bit more challenging so you're working within the right intensity or rep range that is a way of doing it if you've got access to it i still see it's calisthenics um, but if you want to that is a way in which you do it and sometimes i do it if i'm doing my um, glute bridges like the one legged one so that's one thing i do there um, when it, it comes to the last portion of my training will be some core work and normally i do leg raises um, whether it's i normally just do knee raises as opposed to a straight leg um, and then i'll sort of super set up with hyper extensions to make sure I hit my back on that thing and then I finish off with some resistance bands like twists um, and I'll sort of twist and then I'll do ones where I try and hold it and resist my body from being turned that way and then that hits my core and pretty much finishes it. Um, those are basically my exercises. I do a little bit of bicep work uh, just because if I want to progress further on to start doing some more planche work or some more challenging exercises like that where they do place quite a stress on your bicep tendon and they do take quite a lot of bicep strength to be able to keep basically a lot of the straight arm work you need to have quite strong biceps and bicep tendon i've started doing a little bit of bicep work just to make sure that that gets stronger and stays strong once i progress to those harder exercises but if you want to if you don't have access to weights or dumbbells or anything like that, you could just do a little bit of um maybe some chin-ups um, or you can use the rings and you can do the bodyweight curl that's one way in which you can strengthen your bicep so those are basically the exercises that i do but the question is how do i program them and one of the key things to help you identify on how to program them is how either what is your primary goal like what are the key exercises you really want to focus on and which exercises do you really want to get good at and then the other thing that is important to take into consideration is what these exercises, what sort of a stress they have on your central nervous system. Compound exercises, so multiple muscles over multiple joints, are gonna take a lot more out of you. If you're doing, especially ones that involve your legs or your whole entire body, are gonna tax your central nervous system a lot harder. Obviously, if you're doing like deadlifts, they tax your central nervous system a lot compared to if you're just doing bench press. Even though they're compound exercises, the deadlift is going to use your central nervous system a lot more. So you want to program your exercises in order of how much of a stress they're going to place on your central nervous system. Exercises that involve a lot of skill work will stress your central nervous system a lot more. So you want to place them higher up and you want to do them when you're fresh. Because when you're doing skill work, you're trying to make that mind-body connection. You're trying to train your central nervous system to work in a specific way or hold something. For a specific amount of time that is very very taxing on your central nervous system for one but you want to do that sort of skill work when you're fresh so for me when i do my typical training i want to get good at mainly the, the pull up um, pull up and its variations and the dip they're the main key compound exercises so i do them first um, then i move on to my hinge work which is either my deadlift or kettlebell swing and i'll then do that with my handstand work where i do handstand push-ups um, and then i move on to my legs um, so that'll be like my shrimp squat or my um, bridges and then i then move on to my pull-ups no my push-ups 
and my rows. And then I then finish off with sort of core work. And I might even add in my biceps in there at the same time, maybe superset them with some calf raises too. So I'm prioritizing the more technical um, or more central nervous system taxing exercises in the top, plus what I want to really get good at. And then you progress down. Obviously I can do push-ups and rows quite easily. Um, so I can have them a little bit further down and obviously I've switched up between upper body to lower body so there's a little bit of a gap. So my upper body is able to recover when I, after doing legs, I'm able to then do push-ups and rows again. So it's actually a program that I sort of got from the recommended routine from Bodyweight Fitness on Reddit and they have a recommended routine that you can do on there. So I've kind of taken what I like from that and the structure that I like from that and I've changed it in a way for exercises that I like, want to prioritize more and what I find will be easier to combine. So the way in which I navigate the rest for it is on there, normally if you want to get good um, and you want to get stronger and you're using intensities or doing skill things a lot more taxing, you want to have a longer rest, you're not going to be doing pull-ups um, and trying to get good at pull-ups if you're only going to have 30 seconds rest, a minute rest, or even 90 seconds rest. You want to be having two to three minutes at least between sets to get, um, to be able to hit the next set and really, really tax, really get a good number while lifting a heavy intensity. So then which I structure mine is I'll do my pull-ups first and then I'll rest for two minutes and then I'll do a set of my ring dips and then I'll rest another two minutes. So when I come back to me doing my pull-ups, I've technically got about four minutes rest, but it's not four minutes strict, but it allows me to superset them without the superset really taxing. So my exercise ends up, the one I superset afterwards, ends up being impacted too much by the previous exercise. So I'm getting a good two minutes rest before I hit the next exercise. And by the time I come back to the original where I'm using the same muscle groups, I'm basically getting four minutes rest. So it allows me to keep lifting heavy, keep being strong and keep doing taxing exercises to a high level before I start to fatigue. As I come down from my workout, you will naturally fatigue but as I'm doing that, the exercises are becoming less challenging. So obviously I still want to hit my inverted rows and my push-ups hard and work the sort of horizontal plane for my pushing and pulling. But they are easier exercises compared to pull-ups and dips. So those exercises are, are sort of a lot easier variations that naturally tie into my naturally sort of declining fatigue, so I'm um, my increasing fatigue. So as I naturally are getting weaker and more tired, the exercises are becoming progressively easier to match with my fatigue, if that makes sense. So that is a way in which I program my workout. Those are the exercises that I do for it. If you're someone that's looking for a full body workout, I can leave a list down below in the description of my routine, what I do, the rest and things like that. So if you wanna sort of jump in and say, okay, I'll do that workout, you can give that a go. Um, but that's it for today, guys. If you liked the video, give it a thumbs up. If you loved it, consider subscribing. Make sure you hit that bell icon so you know when I upload. Comment down below if you have any questions, and I will see you in the next video.